Welcome. It's the 13th of July, 2022. This is Get Cash Maintenance. Uh, so, Rushikesh, what are, are there topics that you'd like to be sure we discuss? Today, I wanted to, like, I wanted us to, you know, test the software on your machine because I tried doing it from my end, uh, but it wasn't coming. There was a bit of lag when I was using your machines. So, okay. Uh, that was one thing. One more thing I wanted to discuss was about the presentation. Like next week, we'll be having the presentation, right? So what do I need to focus on and what all I have to be working on? Good. Mm, uh, those both and, sound good. And few the small other doubts I have, like regarding, you know, like we discussed about prefetch. We weren't able to use prefetch yeah, because we don't have the credentials of the caches. So uh, how do we implement that okay so, good yeah and and very good so prefetch let, let me take some notes to remind myself of the so we've got git cache maintenance here we go there it is hello rishab okay so hi Mark. hi rishab all right so taking notes today is July oh, okay 13 in your world okay in your part of the world Rishab. all right so review again for me the topics were let's see presentation for uh, July 21 2022 the midpoint Auto, uh, testing to confirm behavior, testing uh, the plugin implementation. And then there was a third. Oh, uh, yeah, prefetch related, you know. Oh, right. Button. Using credentials. Uh, up, um, right. Operating uh, or maintaining caches that have private repositories right and uh, there's one more thing uh you know we were adding caches to the hash set okay to a hash set but we didn't uh, you know add logic to delete those caches from that set so you know assume if there are too many caches present on the jenkins controller and if i don't restart that jenkins controller then you know caches would be added to it and even if user deletes it uh, it would still be present in that set. So I don't know if that would be a performance issue or, you know, it would consume a lot of, uh, you know, memory. Okay. So there's no process that removes um, cache entries from the hash set. Okay, good. All right. Any others that come to mind? Mm, no, no, nothing as of now. So, okay, all right. So, so shall we? Testing could probably take the entire time. I assume we want to time box it to not take the full hour on testing. Um, how much time would you like to spend on the other topics? Uh, I I want to like a more preference to you know uh, running the software on the you know uh, on your computer that is one and the presentation so that that would be like the most important thing of today's session. Okay, so what if we what if we were to allocate half half to each so thirty minutes to each of those would that be okay? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. All right. Rishab, any topics that, that you want to be sure we discuss? Nothing that comes to mind right now. Mark, I was reviewing uh, Rishikesh's PR and I am halfway there. So I would say once I review it, I would probably have something. Once I review it fully, I would have some questions. Great. Okay. Well, and I, I started my reviews. My reviews were focused rather on fixing the compilation so it, it now compiles again and resolving test spot bugs warnings and i was trying to work on test res test failures so i 
actually introduced a test failure that I'll lobby that we should go in and fix to get rid of one of one of the failures I created. But um, I think it's good. Let's do some interactive testing because Roshikesh, I think that's much more valuable than the automation. Automation I can do independently, looking at, at failures, those things can be done by us as individuals. Whereas the the experience of testing the the plugin in in a live environment is is much more interesting, I think. Yeah. I'm Okay. All right. So how about I'll share my screen and let's let's start through a series of, of testing tasks or testing ideas and talk about which ones we want to want to try. Okay, so uh, let's see, share the screen. Okay, you should see the Git Cache Maintenance document. So any, any suggestions, I assume the thing, some of the things we need to test is we need to test um, multi, the operations that are available, and that includes prefetch. And there, as you said, it's public repositories, we know that private repositories can't work, so there's probably no point in, in testing private repositories there. Then we've got uh, commit graph, uh, garbage collection. There was a fourth operation. Help me with that. L lose objects and uh, incremental feedback. Okay, and is that a single operation or two operations? No, uh, there are two different operations. Okay, good, all right. Incremental repack, all right, good. Now commit graph though should work on both public repositories and private repositories, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, except prefetch, all of them are local operations, so. Great, all right, so. Okay. Now, some of the attributes that I think we want to be watching is I think we want to watch the load on the system while the operations are being performed, right? If we were to see that something was very heavily loading the system, that so things to watch. System load. How is the how is the overall system performing? Oh, execution time. That's all oh, right. Execution time of the of the maintenance operation. Good. Uh, are there other things? Should we be worried about delays in starting the maintenance operations? Not really. Okay. Any any others like that that we need to need to be of they need to be of concern. I don't know if, if I I think system load covers it, but um, would there be a relationship in the execution time of the jobs that I'm running in Jenkins and the maintenance tasks that are running in the background? Ah, good question. So in, impact of maintenance on other jobs. Yeah, so for example, we could start a Git plugin test job, start a, whoops, let's switch this. Page the CVP, okay. Come on. Really? It's determined to, okay, there we go. Start a Git plugin, test job, I get client plugin, test job. 
uh, start and then start a maintenance job and watch to see that there is no, um, oh, probably should also scan a multi-branch repository because that actually uses the caches. Maybe we put that as multiples. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I also, um, as I, as you talk, were talking about caches, I, I have one question that I probably can ask that um, later or after this exercise is done. This is related to uh, locking caches and getting the logs. Ah, well, but that seems like something we should be watching for, right? Is cache locks. Uh, during maintenance, right? So we should be able to see that other operations attempt a, for instance, attempt a repository scan during a long garbage collection. Yes, I, I, I just wanted to ask what is our, uh, I mean, what do threads do if, uh, if, uh, if a thread who has acquired a lock for this cache, if it dies or if, if there's an issue uh, while locking it, what would other threads do? Would they wait for it until and unless they get the thread or is there a specific uh, time for which they wait and they move on? Because I did not see any kind of logic like that of trying to acquire a lock and then and waiting for a certain interval. And if it's not there, then moving on. So, but, but I thought that the operations were coming from a single thread. So for instance, there won't be a concurrently running commit graph and prefetch. Is that correct, Rushikesh, or have I misunderstood? Yeah, there is one single thread, which is responsible for maintaining, uh, you know, for running all the maintenance tasks. So uh now it, so assume there's one thread and it's gonna run prefetch so what it's gonna do it's uh when it's running prefetch it goes through mm -hmm. all the caches present on the jenkins controller it locks the first cache it runs the task then it unlocks it then it goes goes and grabs the next next uh, you know cache lock executes it and then unlocks it so so that's no, how my, so my question rishikesh is that uh, you are acquiring a log that means there is an assumption that some other uh, across the whole system some other thread could try to look at the cache while you are working on it right i'm not just I, I, this question is not just for the scope of the maintenance tasks that are trying to acquiring a log on the cache the question is let's say gc acquires a log it started to run but for some reason it takes uh, it's taking a long time right and um, a multi branch uh, job wants to acquire a lock on that same cache so what is the behavior what would be the behavior of uh, that program would it wait for that uh, for, for to acquire a lock and if it would wait then assume a user is trying to run a maintenance job and it would take him let's say 5 minutes to do that and now since gc is going to run and gc is going to take 10 minutes his job is going to be delayed in 10 minutes and he would not know that he would not know why that would be happening so i, I did not see any kind of logic so I, I saw that there's some logic in the abstract git scm class where we we uh, use a re-entrant log we populate the cache uh, the, the map where we actually store the logs right but when we try to acquire the logs across the whole program uh, whole whole git git, git plugin is uh, uh, source code I, I i don't know if that is something that we have kept in mind uh, since this code is uh, was written early on right this was written by steven though i, I am assuming it works fine and there is there's not an instance where uh, a thread enters acquires the lock and then for some reason it cannot uh, free the lock and uh, the other threads they were just waiting or what are they doing that kind of behavior I, I it was something that i could not figure out from the code last night i think it's a good question it's a very good question right so things we should be checking for are our locks released 
when the maintenance task is complete. Okay. Good. Any other observations, Rishab? This was a Okay, so let's, I think what we want to do then is let's grab, what I was going to do is grab the, so this is pull request 1277. So I'm going to go grab the build of this. So pull request 1277. And I believe I had already updated the Git client plugin. Let's take this one. Okay, manage Jenkins, manage plugins. So first things first, let's check to see what version. Oh, okay, this this one has has I've been updated with the the newer version of the Git client plugin, but haven't restarted yet. So I'm going to paste this URL. This is the Git plugin RC4832. Okay, now we're going to restart. This is as usually it's at least a minute because there are many jobs on this. So while it's restarting, Let's take a look. Are you okay if I spend just a minute while we wait for the restart to fix my mistake in the tests? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the mistake I made is evidence here in this test result. We look at the test result. I extended or I did some work on a test for test get version get test get git version. And the mistake I made was I said that it was not allowed to have a, a value of zero on the lower range of a version number, either the minor, minor number or the patch number. But that is allowed, right? 3.0.0 will eventually be released as a git version. So zero has to be allowed in the second and the third position. I, we don't want to let it be in the first position because we're not interested in supporting any Git version older than 1.0. So I'm going to do some quick fixing of this mistake that I made. And as soon as we see indication that the... Whoops. Ah, that's the problem. All right. That will annoy me until I get rid of it. There we go. Okay. So yeah. All right. So this has my latest changes in it. And let's see where I made the mistake. So here's in test get version. The mistake I made was that okay, it asserts that there must be more than one entry in the version array. So that means 2.0 or in the cases that I know, 2.17, for instance, is an allowed version, no dot, no dot beyond it. So if the major version is, it must be greater than zero and less than 99 was my assumption. The minor version is greater than minus one and less than 99. And likewise, the patch version should be greater than minus one and less than 99. Those changes seem reasonable to the two of you? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Great. Let's do a compile. Okay. 
maintenance task configuration task. Okay. Okay, now let's go back here and I bet we're ready to, oh, no wrong one. This one is ready. So let's check that we've got the expected version of the plugin. So manage plugins, installed plugin, get the client plugin version is RC3100 and the git plugin version is RC4832, RC4832. So as far as I can tell, we've got the right one. Now let's prove that further by going to manage Jenkins. And here we see git maintenance. Yes, clearly we have the right thing. Great, defaults to hourly. Now we had said that we wanted to test, is there one of those that's more valuable to you to test first, Rishikesh? Uh, <clears throat> I already tried testing, you know, uh, running tasks every minute those things are running as expected. We can try it once again, you know, okay. set a cup, yeah. Now, and how were you, how were you able to observe it? Did you observe it through, through Logs. the system log? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we look at the system log here, and you already have a system log defined? Yeah, get ISP. maintenance, yeah. Perfect, okay, so when I open this, it should show me some of your, some of your, okay, so. Loaded, get me now. Do we need to adjust the logging level at all? No, no, it's, it's fine. Okay, I, I so it's it logging all. all records. Oh, okay, good. So you're being very verbose. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's pick one then. How about let's do prefetch? So prefetch, if we make it minute by minute. Yeah, <clears throat> and then save it. Okay. Yes, I really meant minute by minute. And I do a save. Yeah, and now it would, it would, it would execute on it. Okay. All right, now, all right, that surprises me a little. Assigned hourly to commit graph because I was trying to assign it the empty string. Okay, like, okay, can you go back to the Git, like, to the UI ones? Mm hmm. Uh, like, I mean, the, the maintenance task UI. Oh, sure. You bet. Here See, we go. There's an okay. hourly there, right? So that's Ah, better. okay. Got it. Right. Yeah, so if yeah, I want yeah. that blank, I have to actually blank it. Thank you. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. And then that makes see, sense. Okay. Now, if uh, we look. Now. Okay. Log records. You'll have to scroll Spinning. these for the previous logs. Yeah. Right. So incremental re repack faults. Assigned to incremental, okay. Loose objects execution faults, commit graph execution faults, prefetch execution faults. Assigned every minute to prefetch. Oh, interesting. Now, wait a sec. I, oh, I did assign every minute to prefetch. Okay, so it's telling me the truth. Good. All right, and it's running a task prefetch on this repository. So let's go take a look at it, shall we? So as a user, uh, the way that I would understand uh, if what I've actually executed runs or not would be to come to the logs and see the logs or uh, do we plan to actually put something in the UI to be able for the user to understand that? 
Mm. Yeah, in the second phase of you know the G shock uh, thing, that was the mm. you know that was what uh, I uh, proposed you know in the proposal that I would you know add a UI to display uh, the how the maintenance tasks were executed, like what were the you know the data related to how whether it passed successfully or not. So that doesn't have to come right now. I was just trying to understand. Okay, I see nothing in pack. I see maintenance.lock. I assume that's a lock that either command line Git has applied or we've applied. But Rushikesh, I don't see any pack files. Oh, is this, is this an empty repository or something? It seems to be. Although it looks so git remote minus V. Oh, oh, okay. Interesting. This is, that should not be empty. Git fetch. Oh, there would be a prefetch, you know, file here. You say there would be, so, so this, you know. This if you lock go to file. the refs, if you go to the refs folder, there should be something related to. Okay, so let's look in dot git in the refs directory. Hmm. hmm. Okay, and I don't see anything. I'm gonna try a git fetch. Are you okay if I do a fetch? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure why this is, could not read. Okay, ah, okay. so that right. was so, the reason, yeah. So why is that the case? Let me fix uh, that. That that won't help us because we need, we need this one. Is this is a good example of a large repository? So Git bare Linux. Um, and there is no way for us to for the maintenance task to get the credentials and uh, make connection with the remote repository. Right? I think that was already discussed. Oh, there is one way of you know a user entering the credentials you know because the abstract git scm has a you know abstract method which takes in you know a string credential id mm -hmm. but i am not sure how do i implement that with the logic mm -hmm. of how we are executing the maintenance task right now because that is for a single cache or uh, and we are running on a group of caches so we would be needing, uh, you know, a group of credential IDs. So. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do a, I need a copy local here of, and let's do a minus minus mirror. Uh, no, stable slash Linux. Okay. Get clone, why too many arguments? Hmm. Oh.
No. So apparently I don't know syntax. Just a minute. Git clone mirror. Oh, not mirror. Minus minus reference. Okay. There. Okay, so that first one that we were attempting is not going to help us because it's empty. It's gonna take some work to get it filled. We'll want it, but let's let that run. So back to the log, right? Let's if see. You, yeah, if you refresh the logs, you, I think you'll get more, uh, you know, more caches with Absolutely. the execution time. If they... Okay, so let's do it. And we now see so this was one error I was facing when I was trying to execute prefetch itself. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it says prefetch added a queue and it's now saying, hey, it's already in the queue. So th does this tell us that it's actually working? So initialize executing prefetch on this one. Let's I, go. I... Go ahead. Okay, I think what I understand what's going on right now. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, the maintenance task has been added to the queue, like uh, prefetch has been added to the queue. Mm -hmm. And uh, now what what's happening is the main, you know, it's running on that cache. But then we terminated the uh, maintenance task instantaneously, you know, to update the value. And I think the lock hasn't been released. So I think that's the reason why. Okay, well, so let's go look, right? If we look here and that is, oh, that's the same location. All right, so. And where did I find the maintenance lock? The pack in the pack file and ah, the objects. So it's in objects pack. No, it okay. doesn't seem doesn't seem Can to be you holding into a lock the objects. Now. Yeah, it should be in the objects. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah. All right. So you're okay if I delete that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I don't see I see a fetch running. and an SSH running. Okay, so it's it's trying to do the fetch there. And I think what you're saying is then should I should I stop this task here? Oh the task that, yeah prefetch? that's no let it run. Yeah, that, that's the task which is you know continuously running. Okay, so I'm not understanding it. Should I should I leave it running or kill it? Oh, you you can terminate it right now. So. Okay, all right. Now I'm not sure I can actually terminate it because it may be inside the Docker container. Oh, okay, I got it. And then this is an SSH command that's that one I can terminate. Okay, bin.git is a private repository. So somewhere here, okay, so in this one, I've got a maintenance lock right at the moment. Okay. 
and it is 90 megabytes. I'm a 90 megabyte repository, so it's not a small repository. And it's saying do the fetch, or it's saying it's somewhere saying do a fetch. Is it does it still have the lock? It does. If I were to do a fetch here, will it honor that lock, or is that lock only honored by by Jenkins? Uh, I that that is by Jenkins that maintenance locks. Okay. All right. So if I said this, I should see some data traffic. There was a little bit. And now it's got some things that can be garbage collected. Okay, so what we've got running right now, if we go back to this and look to see, we should see the log file that tells us Okay, so it's using the official git maintenance command, executing the prefetch. Should we go there? Yeah. Okay, I don't see a maintenance lock here. Now it's possible that it just completed. Oh, I, I do see I the see maintenance, maintenance lock. Oh, there it is. Yeah. What am I saying? It's right above where I'm typing. Okay, good. So we should be able to see something in the log that tells us that it's making progress on that. Okay, now I need the directory name again, just a moment. This is the directory. Okay, with that directory name, here we go. Cache lock has been acquired, executing the prefetch. And then the, the next log should be, you know, releasing the log, but I don't know why is it not releasing the log here. Well, and let's go look to see if we've got uh, a process running. Yes, it's still running. But, but would it take this long? I, I Particularly sure. in getting zero CPU seconds. If it, okay, it started at 34, so it's four minutes old and seems to be getting no progress. So how would you mind if we try the same command? Yeah, sure. Just to see if we can understand why it's not. Uh, you know, you can run the maintenance task itself, you know, the above command, get maintenance oh. run. Oh, okay. So I can just say git maintenance run prefetch. Oh, no, no. Da, uh, That's dash, not the dash, Yeah. Oh, you know, dash. And then the What's task prefetch? that we were running was what we, we were running prefetch. Prefetch. Okay. Prefetch. All right. Git maintenance. Okay, so I don't have access to a Git version that is the same version as what's inside the Docker container. Oh, the, can you go back to the logs once again, Mark? I can, yes. Here? Oh, oh here. Okay. Uh, if, if you see, if you scroll a bit, you know, on top, uh, like, You're... can you see, like, yeah, there would be a, a log which states, yeah, see, greater than 2.30, then why, why is this log being printed? 
So because my Jenkins instance is running inside a Docker container. Okay. So, okay. so we can do, we could go inside the container like this, Docker exec, uh, exec, no, let's see, Docker exec minus minus, what is the, oh, minus I, I minus T, give this and then bash. Okay, git minus minus version here is 2.30.2, whereas on the outside of the container, it's the older version. Okay. All right, so now we want to go to that location, Jenkins underscore home slash caches slash git. dot git and it, the place where it's stored is objects yes there it is so it's still in maintenance and now if we look at the process listing it's doing this prefetch thing and so what you were saying was hey i should be able to do the prefetch thing myself just by saying git maintenance Minus minus task. Uh, run run minus. Oh, run. Is do I need minus minus? No no no. Okay, so just get maintenance run, prefetch. Uh, no uh, no no minus minus ta uh, task is oh. it, like the command is right there. You Got know? it. Okay, yeah. like that. So uh, get run no quiet. So that we see noise. All right. Maintenance objects, get objects, maintenance exists, skipping maintenance. Okay, so it thinks it's running. But when I look at the processor time that's been allocated, it's not doing anything with that. So, so uh, Rishikesh, have we specified a timeout here for the maintenance task? Uh, is no, there a... no, no, there is no timeout. So I then uh, when you've acquired a log to the cache and now let's say this is running and not exiting, any other thread who is trying to uh, use that cache would wait for the yes, log, right? Yeah. Okay, so I think now there I, is a deadlock situation or something, you know. I, I actually I don't think it's a deadlock. I think it's mm -hmm. this is an authenticated repository and it's blocked. Because when I try that git fetch command, the exact git fetch command here, mm -hmm. it prompts me for using a, a password. Oh git so. remote minus v. So so it's asking for oh, oh, right, right. Okay. In the in the user environment, I had access to my SSH private key. In this environment, I do not because I'm inside the Docker container. So this is an authenticated repository. So how do I, is there a way for me to end this running process and cause it to go to the next process or am i um okay i, mean, I, have, I assume oh. if i kill it i assume if i kill it it will it will continue with the next with the next uh the next uh, repository is that a safe assumption mm -hmm. uh, i think here the problem right now is we are not able to you know uh, run prefetch on you know authenticated authorized uh, repositories. Right, right, exactly. So, due to which we are waiting continuously, you know, for you know authentication is mm -hmm. what is my assumption. So I think we can kill it by you know going to the UI and you know clicking on terminate. That would kill the thread itself. Oh, okay. But now that would terminate all processing, right? Whereas what I did should have just shown one message. Oh, whoops, now why is it restarting? OK, 
Okay, that I don't understand. This was the case which I faced when I ran only the prefetch command because I, when I tried the same thing and even I found the same error, uh, I wasn't able to debug it. Uh, well, and, and when I try to run that prefetch command, the command that it's running, I can see why it blocks because it... When I do that, oh, I'm back in the, I need to be there. Okay, caches this. Okay, there it is. And now if I say git remote minus V, if I say git fetch, it prompts for a password. And this is where a maintenance task would get stuck if it's trying to read. I think so. I, I think yeah. so, because what we see here is, here's the maintenance task. Well, interesting. No, it's it's moved on to Jenkins bugs, which is a public repository and then Jenkins bugs private, which is a private repository. So can we see the logs once like uh, uh, you bet. something? Okay, so the logs here, nope, nope. Where did I put my logs? Well, must have I must have made a mistake and clicked the wrong thing and exited from the log page. System log, git maintenance. Chugga, chugga, chugga. I need a faster computer. I always need a faster computer. Okay, so here it says it's running, doing the maintenance run on this repository. Shall we go look at that repository now or would you like to see something different? So one minute if if see uh, if there is no access to that uh, repository actually there should be a log displayed like there like above there's a log please make sure you have the correct access rights and and that we definitely did see please make sure you have the correct access rights yeah. because it says permission denied fatal could not read from remote repository Oh, and here's the cache unlock that you said should be happening. So, so we do see cache locked. But sometimes it's getting stuck, you know. Or, and... Right. And I think, I think that's what we should be seeing here is inside this repository, it should show that it is stuck. Okay, it's got the maintenance lock. And if I do a git pull, it will. Okay, let's use, ah, nope, git fetch. Now it's prompting me for password. So I can't work on this one either. Are you okay if I kill this one? Oh, uh, can we try changing the maintenance task to something local for now? You sure, know? absolutely. So if to do that, we would switch, right? We go back here and we know, try disable prefetch. And add a commit graph instead. Yeah, so let's go to commit graph. And save it. Okay, and that one. Save. Okay, I had let it time out, so I have to uh, have to bring it back. So no prefetch, and we do want commit graph, and we want it how often? Every minute. Oh, one minute. Yeah. I think. Okay. Save. 
and can can we clear oh. those previous logs once uh yes absolutely save and now let's clear this log okay Big now one. log records uh, it'll take like one minute to okay all right so now we're ready to save do I need to terminate here and then start no, again? Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. All right. Log records. There we go. Okay. Maintenance configuration data successfully stored. And the thing it's performing is incremental repack uh, is it? no no commit graph like this this is all the data which has been stored the logs okay uh, can we refresh this page uh-huh yes so just so commit graph added to maintenance queue so if we refresh i think we would be seeing some logs okay so commit graph added it to, added to maintenance queue. I'm not seeing it there, but if we look inside the inside the machine, it's definitely running a prefetch here as a result of a maintenance run minus minus task equals prefetch. And if we look at I was going to look to see if we could see the parent process ID. So parent process ID of this one, SSH talking to the remote is, okay, so this one is talking and it's prompting for a, a password. It's prompting to get authentication. So we've once again found a case where I think we need to kill this process. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, Mark, I, I think I understand what's going on. Like once, can you go to the maintenance UI and terminate the, uh, you know. Oh, because... oh, okay. Because in this case, it's holding the lock. Yeah, uh, because actually the prefetch task was still present in the queue. So we didn't, ex uh, you know, terminate okay. it. So now so if now... we look at the log here, Will we see an entry in the log that tells us that the queue has been cleaned? If you, if you scroll. Okay, so what I see is initialize executing prefetch. So it's attempting a prefetch now, even though I'm not executing. Is that, is, am I reading the log correctly? There should be a log which says, you know, kill the thread successfully, you know, something like that. Ah, wrong search. Oh. Okay, I don't see thread. Terminated execution, something like that. Terminate. Okay, terminated execution of maintenance task. Terminated scheduling of Git maintenance tasks. Couldn't run prefetch message. Uh, no. And and uh, and can we like now run the you know comment graph maintenance task? Oh oh good all right that's a very reasonable request. Okay so I'm going to clear this log. Chug chug chug. Okay show me what's happening. Uh, and we have to click on execute and the UI like. Right. So I, I just wanted to be sure I had a okay. clean state. And as far as I can tell, I do have a clean state. So now we're going to attempt to execute commit to graph every minute. Okay. Commit graph added to maintenance queue. And now it will. So what it's done is it's queued the, the, maintenance the commit graph task 
and now the commit graph will iterate over all the repositories oh, and yeah. Come on. Okay, so if I were to go look at the process, I see a fetch running here. Still, still there's a fetch operation. Oh, right. That should we should be able to kill that, right? Because it should have killed it on its own. I don't know. Now, why would it kill it on its own? Because I just... tried. Because when I clicked on uh, when I click on the terminate button, uh -huh. uh, you know the thread running that prefetch should have you know. No, but this is died. this is a separate execution, uh, right, okay. Rishikesh? Git plugin oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. would not have control over this. I believe. So once again, we've got jobs that are trying to run. And here it is. It seems to still be starting new jobs. Something is starting a new job. It is too strong. I don't know what it would mean in this context, but okay. I, it looks to me like I have successfully killed all of those jobs. Now, will I see something that tells me I did that terrible thing in the, uh, oh, wrong, wrong window, sorry. Let's bring up the correct window. Here we go. We are looking for this one. Okay. Log records. All right. Lock the cache. Version that says it can use it. Executing commit graph. Okay, so we should be able to see the proof of that in that repository, right, Fushikesh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now and... No, oh, there would be a comment graph, right? Okay, and it would be at the top level or is it in objects? Oh, no, it, it would be in infos if I'm not wrong. Like, so objects info, uh, there it yeah. is, okay. And this is a binary data file, right? Yeah, yes. And it, I think in the logs, it would show the execution time as well. In, oh, okay, well, uh, so let's, uh, uh, let's go look at that. Yeah. Here we go, back here. So in the logs, okay, so if we take that we see oh yes here it is execution time nine milliseconds okay good all right so so this definitely does seem to be seem to be doing the commit graph at least the case that we tested and here we have a this one which has run and now completed successfully, right? It says, hey, we we'll run a batch file, run a shell script, lock the cache. It then says, hey, this is a modern enough Jenkins or not modern enough Git version to do real maintenance. And then it says, start running the commit, the the commit graph task on this repository. And there it is running and it ran for one less than one or less seconds. Hmm. Okay. And then it unlocked the cache. So that, that looks promising, right? That seems like it did what it was, what it was claiming to do. <clears throat> yeah. That's, that's, so. Now let's let's look at execution time. Oops. Okay, twelve milliseconds. 
for that commit graph. Seven, eight, five, six, five. Five and six. Okay. All right. And I apologize to the two of you, but I'm running out of energy. I'm I'm getting weary. Sorry. It's it's getting late my time and I've been up. Did we accomplish positive things for what you wanted for Shakesh? And should we schedule a time to do this again uh two days from now, for instance? Yeah, it would be good if we schedule it two days from now because I'm worried about few things not working. So, and okay. then there is a presentation uh, next week. So, so yeah. what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to open up my calendar and I'm going to move this this meeting to two days from now. So I'm just going to edit it and shift it so that we will meet right after documentation office hours on what for you will be July the 15th. Oh, because I try, I wanted to do this on my own, but I don't have access to those, you know, that Docker container. So that was, yeah. E exactly. I mean, there are, there are all sorts of subtle things going on there that it's, it's just better if we do this together, right? We, okay. we, will, we will have better ideas together. We'll find more things together. I think that's a very good thing that we did exactly what you suggested this. We've got a plan for how we approach it. We've got things we should be watching. So I think, I think it's a good, good thing. Now, one of the things that I haven't uh, arrived at yet was how to get a good test case for things like um, things like garbage collection. Um, so because, for instance, here, I just copied the stable Linux configuration. And what we'll see is it's all in a pack in pack files. So there's no, no, no loose, there are no loose commits to, to be tidied by garbage collection. And I don't know how to generate a repository that has lots of loose commits other than just creating the commits oh, and maybe that, that's that is, what we have to do. There is one way of, you know, removing all, all objects from the pack file. You know, I tried that once where I removed oh. all objects from the pack files and put it in, you know, an objects folder uh, so that I could run the maintenance task only for that sake. And then everything again goes back into the pack file. So. Ah, okay. So you have a technique. Okay. So you can teach us yeah. that technique on Friday then. Good. Yeah, yeah. All uh, right. And regarding the, um, uh, you know, next week's presentation, what about, about that? Uh, uh, how do I approach that? So, so uh, what I would do is plan to show a demonstration. So we can demonstrate this and, and show, hey, look, here's what it's doing. It's running a garbage collection here. It's running a a commit graph, it generated the commit graph here and, and show now maybe, maybe for real life, we ought to have show it on my system rather than showing it on. So maybe we need to have me, me doing me running the keyboard on that demonstration while you describe so that, okay, share my screen, but you describe what the story is. Look, we're going to do this now and watch what happens. Here are these things that don't have, these caches that don't have commit graphs. We're going to remove the commit graphs and now we're going to run commit graph and it will recreate them all. Or uh, do we, you know, uh, record a video only for, you know, running the maintenance task and, you know, go through it rather than, you know, having it done live there because I think that would be chaotic we, <laughs> you know i would mess I'm, things up yeah i'm i'm not the least bit scared of doing a live demonstration <laughs> that's there there is no fear in me because we know this is a we know this is still under development if if nothing breaks 
clearly we've done something really wrong because we've hidden all the breaks. So, so I, I, I think we should do a live demo because I worry about trying to have them display a, a video of us. And I worry about us spending the time and energy to create the recorded video. Okay. So if so, uh, go ahead. Uh, so what, what I will do, I will try making a presentation first, you know, uh, you know, uh, containing like information about what this plug, what this, uh, you know, project is about and what is going to solve. And uh, yeah, that that's what I would do, you know, to get myself ready. Good. Well, and let's and let's plan to review that on on Friday, so okay. that we've we can have a at least let's talk about your outline, um, as to which topics you're going to discuss and what thing what that means and why you why you've chosen this path versus that path that kind of thing. Okay. Now, and uh, one one final thing, can we run a maintenance task? You, you know, can you configure something like hourly something on, on your machine and, you know, check after an hour, like, can we check after an hour whether those maintenance tasks are running or not? Because I tried doing something like that and I couldn't get any logs. Uh, ah, okay. Well, so yeah. yeah, let's, let's ask it to choose. Are you okay? Which one would you like to do to run hourly and see? Uh, you know, a comment, not prefetch. Prefetch is giving a lot of issues. Right. Uh, uh, you could do a comment graph or a GC. Okay, so let's do hourly. Yeah. Should, should I terminate the one that is running now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's terminate that. So it says it's terminated. Now, if we say hourly for commit graph and we do our, and will there be, there will be log entries for garbage collection as well, yes. right? Yes. Okay, and are those two enough or would you like more? I, I think if this, yeah, we saw it enough for now. Okay, yeah. all right, wait a sec. So you say those two are enough or do you want more? Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Um, okay, so I'm going to say execute and whoops, why did it say Oh, you didn't save it, I, I guess. So. Oh, oh, right, right. Oh, You're my you. Yeah, I love the, the UI. That... Right, I, I, you, you are exactly correct. I did not, I need to terminate first. Yeah. first you have and to then terminate, I say then hourly. You to, oh, yeah, and then save it. And I set this to hourly. And then I say save. I save, and, and then now, yeah. Now, now I, I can execute. say execute. And now yeah. if I go into the log, I should have cleared the log at that judicious point. I'm gonna clear it now. Okay, now if I look at log records, it will tell me. Oh, you cleared it, right? So I, cl I cleared it, but there's a there's a task running. It's just hourly, so I know. I oh, don't know oh when so I, I, right. So it'll happen, it, ha it probably has not happened yet. Good, Yeah. okay. So that, that means tomorrow, 12 hours from now, when I get up and I'm functional again, I'll check this to see what the log says. You will have to see at least 12 logs. So, you know. I hope so. Right. Yeah. And I added this thing, you know, a hash thing in the so, you know, so that it uh, schedules the task, you know, randomly to not okay. uh, generate load. So, we'll have to check that also. So, great. I tried doing it, I couldn't see it. So, if you could see it from, you know. I will, I will look at it further. Thanks very much, Rishikesh. Thank you. Yeah. And I think, well, let's see, there was, I was in the, we, we were working on, or I was working somewhat on a fix for my mistake, right? Did we ever push that? Uh, not sure that I ever pushed it. Just a minute. Maybe I didn't even fix it. Okay, I didn't. So, so Rushikesh, I apologize for leaving things with debris. That there are there there's a failing test in there. I don't know where I put the work I was doing before we switched our focus. Because, hmm. 
Oh, oh, I know where it is. It's actually in this window. It's right here. There, that's the fix. Okay. All right, before before I go to bed, I, I want to know if this fixed it. I think it would depend on your version, right? Like it would. It does, right? So, yeah. my version does not have a dot zero in any of exactly. those. Exactly. Yeah. But I think I'm okay with that, right? So, git commit uh, fix test that I broke earlier. Uh, 2.0.0 is a valid git version. Okay, so at least one of the failures that I introduced is resolved. I'll, I'll, that, I'll try fixing those, you know, other ones. Uh, because right. I'm, I'm just worried, you know, because I, I tried doing all the, and then, you know, tried try, doing all it of it and you know still there are issues which doesn't you know make the code run that's something which is worrying so right well and and now i'm curious what which of these i was expecting to see one of them oh there it is one two seven seven okay good so the changes that i just pushed have been detected and the job has started Okay, yeah, so it's still doing the checkout, but at least it has, well, no, wait a sec, why is it not showing the changes? That's interesting because it's already doing the checkout and yet the UI is not showing the change that I made. Oh, well, it will eventually. Okay, Hrushikesh, I'm going to call it a night because oh. because I need some sleep. Sure, sure, man. I'll see you on Friday. Sure. Thanks. Take care. Good night. Bye bye.